So welcome to the May Columbia team. This is it. This is your pre-departure kind of admin briefing. The aim of this Zoom is by the end of it, listening to it today or on recording, that you, you feel um, confident and you organized and you know what to pack, da, 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 da. So we are going to run through your itinerary, your flights, money, extra costs, the budget for Starling Revolut cards, all that, phones, kit, personal admin, health and safety. Okay, so there is quite a bit to run through. At, as I whiz through each section, if you've got a question, literally wave at me, catch my attention, and you know we'll answer as we go. So be interactive, um, you know, because we do ultimately want you to feel totally organized by the time we finished. So let's start with flights, okay? Let me just uh, move to my um, flight Columbia. So you are all flying on the same flight apart from Angus, who is arriving two days before and staying at the Zamia Hostel in Bukarangamanga. Now, that is absolutely fine. We've just heard um, from Angus, we've just heard from Brendan that he will pick you up at the hostel after picking everybody else up from the airport. So their arrival time um, is about 10 to 8 in the morning so he should be with you let's just say about half past nine okay but there is a group whatsapp so with anything that changes we can work you know you can just be kept up to date with the rest of you going on avianca it's pretty simple straightforward flight okay by the time you get to bogota you will be exhausted it is the early hours in the morning and then you will go um, you, will, you will arrive, you will pick up your bags. I think that is one thing you have got to check when you are checking in or at the airport. Are these bags going all the way through or am I getting them in Bogota? You never, it, it can change. So please clarify so you know what to do. Should your bags go all the way through, which is the dream ticket, then you will, you will check out, you will come in, go through customs at Bogota. OK, and then you will walk out of the airport and down literally next door to the internal airport to catch that internal flight. Now, Avianca, Avianca can be a bit annoying. And if they, they can change their internal flights, the timing of those internal flights more often than we like. OK. But I don't want you to panic if you get to Bogota and they say, oh, my, God, we're sorry, that flight's been cancelled. They are really good and they will just automatically put you on the next flight. Again, this has happened. The last two times has actually been really efficient and no changes, but we have, we have seen these changes. So I'm just forewarning you. So when you get to Bogota, you go to the internal, you check in for your internal flight. If they change it, don't panic. They'll put you on the next one on the group WhatsApp. You let Brendan know. OK, and he will be monitoring the flights from his end. At um, So he, he will know But that's what you're going to do. And then Angus, you will then just be you just rest up at the hostel until they come and get you. OK, and all comms will be on the group WhatsApp. OK. Before you go, there is a form online that you need to fill in for Columbia. It is a beast of a form, okay? It literally fries everybody's head and um, you can't do it until the day before you go. So I'm not even going to send you the link until the day before you go because uh, uh, people are going to go uh, go too early and it causes, you know, all sorts of um, admin stresses. So just be mindful that the day before, there will be an infuriating form to fill in. We will be sending you lots of top tips and will be in the office to help, but that needs to be done. Other than that, it's all pretty <clears throat> straightforward. Meeting at the air airport, communicate on the WhatsApp, but I would 
check in by yourself, go through passport control, and then meet everybody on the other side. You are, I think, terminal three from the top of my head. And I would just meet in the in the atrium at the bottom where you've got Costa and Pret hanging out in that big seating area. And, you know, start texting each other and meet up. there. OK. Any questions on your flights? Good, good. Good. OK. Now to your itinerary. OK, so the itinerary is pretty. I'm not going to go through a day to day itinerary because that that changes day to day kind of weather dependent. There's so many um, variables. But when you get there, you will have a day to day itinerary and a week by week itinerary given to you it's all written on the blackboard when you get there. So, you know, every day what is expected of you, your timings, da, 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 da. So you are kind of led through the experience. But as an overview, the first two and a half weeks, you are in Barichara. Seems like my Spanish accent there. Okay, that is where you are going to be living. That is in the, what we describe as the Canyonlands, really, really, really rural Colombia, which you will love and appreciate at the end of your program, when you look at the coast versus this rural experience, because this is where you are going to be, Brendan is our guy on the ground, okay, and his family. And they are kind of big movers and shakers. They're part of this fabric of Barichara. You know, they are loved by all, and it's a really small community. And you, as his guests, are just swept up into this community atmosphere. So before you know it, you are playing card games with the local Colombians, you know, in their kitchen late at night. You know, there are so many of these wonderful local scenes that you just, you'll pinch yourself and think, how did I end up here? Gambling, you know, with kind of, not, not real gambling, but you know what I mean. Um, with all these crazy people late at night um, in, in this wonderful place. Brendan's got about five children. Before you know it, they're going, you, you're going to, they are, they absolutely love the volunteers. They kind of wake you up every morning. And, you know, again, you're part of the family. So the first four, two and a half weeks, you're in Barachara and your time is divided amongst Spanish lessons, really important and, and, and it's not kind of school Spanish, it's conversational Spanish. If you're good, you, you'll be put into the basic, medium, advanced classes, depending on where you are at. But it's to really help you get by. OK, because a lot of people in Central South America do not speak English. It's not like being in Asia or Africa. It's very, very different. So it's just to help you get by. In addition to that, you're going to be doing your volunteering program and uh, projects which are conservation based, helping with the reforestation projects that we've got going there. You'll see little saplings that Leap has planted two years ago, no, two years ago now, big trees. And it's a lot of replanting that needs to be done. So you'll see how that whole process works. You'll be working in the school. Um, they are avid footballers and rugby players. Okay, they love it out there. And girls, this me, this is for you too. Okay. It's not a kind of, you know, uh boys versus girls thing. It's everybody can get involved. Brendan heads up the kind of local small little people's kind of rugby team in the area and football. So before you know it, you're going to be having his yellow bibs on and you're going to be involved in some game. So just brace yourself for that. Anybody wants to take a gum guard, do feel free to do so. Um um, so you're going to be doing uh, Spanish, you're going to be doing community uh, conservation projects, community projects, working in the school, community, doing all these kind of wonderful football and rugby matches. And also there's every group helps one particular family or maybe a couple. And that family is a family in need voted by the community. So there's a part of the budget goes towards this person who's in need. And the last time it was a blind man who needed to have his flaws all um, uh, evened out. 
it, so you you they kind of set to and they put all this kind of commun um concrete floors down so he could easily move about um the time before it was a lady whose roof had fallen down and everybody rebuilt that so there is always a person in need voted by the community which project which you then tackle and everyone loves that okay in addition to this two and a half weeks, you'll be going on gentle hikes. And the purpose of these gentle hikes is to acclimatize, to get fit, because you've got a big challenge at the end. So you do little hikes in week one and two. In week three, you do a canyon hike, which everyone loves, but it is hard work, I'm telling you now. You, you trek down, you sleep by the river, and then you have to trek up the next day. Okay, then you rest up. And in the final week, final 10 days is phase two when you move to the coast. And within that 10 days, you do the big challenge, which is the three night, four day lost city trek. OK, now everybody does this, but everybody has to get themselves into that mental space thinking I have signed up for this and I am going to do this. It is a challenge. It is sleeping in um, hammocks. It is bath, uh, you know, showering in the rivers. It is very basic, but it is absolutely sensational as you go right from the coast, trekking through all different, um, going through the cloud forest, the jungle, up to the top where the lost city is. So it's it's kind of three days up, one day down. So you've got mules and everything to carry your gear. All you need is a little day sack. But you're, you're all ready for that. You will all do it. And Brendan is brilliant. He gets everyone completely psyched and mentally ready. So it will be cool. Um, within that last 10 days, you will have downtime to just chill at the beach. You'll be going to Palomino Beach, Santa Marta, and ending in Cartagena. And that is your end point. So for those that are wanting to go traveling on at the end, it's that's your exit. And if you're wanting to go north to Central America or south, further down to South America, super easy to do from Cartagena. OK, really, really easy. And all flights can be changed closer to the time when you're out there. We can direct all of that. OK, so is that go? <laughs> A question is Brendan with them throughout all of this four weeks yes okay, thank you Brendan and Josie his wife and his five children are the main movers and shakers behind the program and then under 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 them you've got three ish um uh pro program junior leaders who take you off if, if you're the group is dividing on one day some are doing community some are doing reforestation some are having Spanish lessons you go off with very various, various people but yes Brendan and Josie are in charge and Brendan always goes with you to the coast to do the lost city trek and he is a super cool man he is Scottish by um from origin how he's ended up in south america i have no idea but we've worked with him for years he used to run our program in venezuela um, back in the day before venezuela went completely crazy he then him and josie then moved to colombia and here we are but he's my kids have both stayed with him both boys and they absolutely love him he's got some crazy tales to to tell you so pick his brains you know about narcos and all of that he can, you know, he can, yeah, he's really interesting. So everyone loves him. Any other questions on your itinerary? Nope, 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 nope. Okay, great. So um, where are you going to be living on your itinerary? When you're in Barichara, you're living in a hostel, which we take over. So it, it's like the leap home. But you've all got, it's really nice and civilized. You've got kind of girls, boys, dormitories. There are some rooms with bunk beds, some rooms with single beds. Your meals are there, breakfast and lunch are there, your Spanish lessons. It's got great chill out area, hammocks and the likes. It's very, very cool. Um, in the evenings, supper is not included. And the reason for being is that you need the choice. 
you know, there's so many great little restaurants and cafes and sodas where you can go and hang out. So Brendan will direct you where you could go and have supper. And he helps organize that. Um, you, so budgeting for supper, I would budget kind of 10 to $15 a night. Okay, that's, that's really all you need. But it always then comes down to how many beers you're going to drink. If you're going to go, you know, drink very kind of expensive imported wines, then you can see how your budget can run, run away with you. So you've got to be mindful and work, set a, set a budget. Most people kind of set a budget of 150 quid, 200 quid extra a week and don't go over it. Okay. So while we are on the case of money, okay, everybody is to take two bank cards, okay? This is just good practice. Take your debit card, okay? Because you're going to get your money out from ATMs, the local currency. So take your debit card and take a Revolut, Monzo, or Starling. Those are the free, the, the cards which... Um, don't charge you for every time you get money out of the ATM, okay? But should you you keep them separately, so you never take two cards out with you at any one time, should you lose your bag, get it stolen, you never know, drop it into the sea, you've always got a spare bag, a spare card back at base, okay? So don't try and get the local currency out until you get to Colombia and you'll be able to get it from an ATM at the airport, either in Bogota or Bukarangamanga when you arrive or when you're in Barichara. OK, it is easily done. Um, extra costs to budget for. OK, so mentioned the supper and your beer consumption. In addition to that, at the weekends, you are free to, if you wanted to go to San Gil, this is when you're at the coast, uh, in, in the countryside, there is a town about half an hour away called San Gil, which is the adventure capital of Colombia. That's where you could go white water rafting, paragliding, bungee jumping, and do all those crazy, crazy things. In the document that I have sent you or shall be uploading to your MyLeapAria, there is a list of how much those things cost. For example, a bungee jump costs about $85, um, white water rafting about $60-ish. So you might want to budget uh, for the two weekends that you're in Bari, um, Bari Chara, you might want to nip both weekends or one particular day to do one particular activity up up to you okay but that's very easy to organize when you are there but as a heads up please make sure your insurance covers these things if you've taken out our the insurance we, we the insurance that we recommended being campbell irvine they cover two bungee jumps who knew that people want to do two bungee jumps but apparently they do but they, they cover, but if you've got some other random other thing, just make sure, you know, it's white water rafting up to level three. So just check. Campbell Irvin does cover that as well, but check, check, check. Any questions on costings, finances, how you're going to get your money out? All good? Cool. I'm um, sorry, can I ask a quick question again about yes. debit cards? So, um, you do you feel they should take a debit card rather than two Monzo like cards? I'm just a bit anxious if there is money in Rue's bank account, should I sort of siphon most of it out in case his debit card was stolen and they then had ready access to money as opposed to the Monzo, which you know he might only put 100 pounds on the Monzo? Yes, that is true. Um you, you can do, but you can't get two Revolut cards. So you'd have to get a Revolut and a Monzo. Sure. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that is, you know, brilliant, brilliant practice if there's if if you want to go down that route. But I, I would be making sure that the, the debit card is always in, in, in a safe place. And when they go out and about, they take the 
the Monzo, da, 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 da. So the, the, the debit card's a backup card. And is there a safe place for the debit card? I mean, do they, is there a kind of a locker or anything like that as opposed to just in the bottom of a backpack? Yes. So in the hostel, in the hostel, stuff can get locked away. Okay. Thank you. Okie dokes. Um, phones. Okay. Like the debit, like your bank cards, take two phones. Okay. It's another great practice. So you've got your all swinging and dancing phone, which you're not going to lose, get nicked or drop in the sea. But should one of those three things happen, you've got a backup phone at the bottom of your rucksack. OK, and the reason being is that buying phones in South and Central America are hugely expensive and you cannot send anything to South or Central America. OK, it will just get nicked at customs. So um, take a backup burner phone of any shape or variety as a backup. Okay, dogs. SIM cards, you will have Wi-Fi in all the accommodation. Okay, that's, it's Wi-Fi which is good enough to WhatsApp. It is not good enough to download movies and things. OK, so if you're going to think you're going to, you know, you want to download a, a couple of movies or audio books, do that before you go for downtime. Um, not that there will be much downtime, just so you know, but just in case. Um, so with the SIM cards, again, that is very easy to buy in Barichara when you're there to put in your phone if you want to go down that route. Sometimes everyone leaves their all swinging and dancing telephone as it is, and in the burner phone, put the local SIM card in. So that's often how people manage it. Any question on the phones? Just be careful of your phones. You know, it is just, you know, even though you are in a lovely countryside, kind of rural town, everybody likes the look of a very swanky um, iPhone. Um, kit. Okay, I'm just going to go through the kit list. Okay, in your MyLeap area, if you go in and have a look, you will get this list. But everything there is for a reason. I'm just going to whiz through it. Um, T-shirts, long and short sleeves, warmer jumper hoodie for the cooler evenings. You're, just take one. You will only need it. Yes, it does get cooler, especially when you're in the countryside, but a long sleeve T-shirt will do the trick. But when you're on the canyon track at night, it can get cold, um, but you'll need one on the plane. So just take a one warm thing, whether it be a hoodie, a fleece, or the really good things which people take are those Uniglow little puffers, which squish up to absolutely nothing. That's a really good thing to take. A lightweight waterproof jacket, we are, you're not in the rainy season, but it can rain periodically, just have a downpour. So take a really lightweight um, waterproof jacket. Doesn't need to be Gore-Tex or anything fancy like that. It's literally just, oh, it's just, just to help keep you dry. Shoes, three pairs of shoes max. A pair of walking shoes. I'm not talking fancy, um, um, hiking boots you don't need that but you do need a pair of walking shoes trainers which have got good grippy soles okay for for all the walkings that you the walks and treks that you are hikes that you are doing i highly recommend the ones i absolutely love are the salomon speed cross if you just google that okay you'll see what i mean and those are really cool they're kind of waterproof um, they are grippy soles and they're super, they're, they're comfortable. And apparently they're quite trendy now. Who knew? I know they look awful, but apparently, apparently you shouldn't be ashamed with a pair on your feet. So a pair of walkie, good sturdy stuff, a pair of trainers, which you want to wear in the evenings or kind of shoes that you want to, you know, keep nice. And then a pair of sliders, Birkenstocks, those plastic two strap Birkenstocks, a pair of Crocs, I know they're ugly, but they're really useful. So that's all you need, okay? 
You're not to take more than three pairs of shoes. On the kit list, it says one pair of water shoes. It's not essential, but if you're squeamish about walking in rivers when you're on the lost city trek, then take a pair. You know, if you just think, oh, I've got to bathe in this in this water. Sometimes it's going to be absolutely clear, but sometimes it'll be fast flowing. So it will be quite murky and you can't see the bottom. So if you're squeamish and you just think, oh, I feel much better with a pair of those, um, you know, these little reef shoes on, then take them. Um, when it comes to bags, OK, top questions to everyone. Do I need to take a rucksack? No, not really. You don't need to take a rucksack. You can take a roll bag, but what you are not taking is a hard shell-like suitcase on wheels, okay? You are not taking that. You have to take a bag which is soft, malleable, and can easily be squished into the back of a, a minibus and strapped onto the roof of a bus, okay? So it's got to have an element of flexibility to it. The bags, if you haven't got a bag, the bag that I highly recommend are the mountain equipment, heavy duty plastic bags. They are absolutely brilliant. North Face do them too, Patagonia, a thick, thick rubbery plastic. They're so durable and brilliant, but mountain equipment is the, the, cheaper, the cheaper brand. Okay. Uh, thin sleeping bag or liner, I would... The thin, thin, a sleeping bag liner is absolutely, is, is all you need. And that's just to basically climb into when you're doing the treks, when you're sleeping out at night. Okay, everything else is, everything else is self-explanatory. Okay, so uh, personal admin. Uh, so just wants a reminder, could everyone fill in their my leap, their health form? tell us everything please don't be shy go for it you know we've heard it all before but the more we know before we what what i'm trying to say is we hate surprises so what we hate is people arriving and then telling us they've got a severe nut allergy that's hopeless you know so any kind of physical issues mental health issues give us the heads up okay and health and safety brendan and his team will guide you out there okay so um you know, just listen to what they say, especially when it comes to drinking, when it comes to um, going out late at night, you know, listen to their advice on the ground. There's no point me banging on about it now because it will just, it, it, you're not in, you're not in the scene. It's not real. But when it comes to kind of drinking and drugs, if you get caught buying and taking drugs out there, there is no, um, you know, that's it. No second chances. Off you go. You'll be asked to leave the program immediately. When it comes to drinking, yeah, everyone needs to have a few drinks. Absolutely fine. But please don't be that idiot that gets absolutely trashed and throws up everywhere and annoys everybody. That's just really not good behavior. And uh, that brings up the whole group down. So don't be that person. Um, so that is it from me. Does anybody have any questions at this stage? All good? All excited? Are you excited? There's 11 of you now going on this trip. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. I predict by the time you go, there'll be kind of 12 or 13, but it's a really good size, great mix of, of male and female. You'll, you're, you're in for a treat, okay? Ask so, another question, Millie. Yes, you can. To the group, really, if anyone else is at this stage um, thinking of onward travel afterwards or whether, you know, whether the other um, people on the trip are planning to come home at the end of the four weeks or they're open minded or they know they're carrying on. Are you all open minded? Are you all taking, just nod, are you thinking about are you open to the idea of maybe staying on and doing a phase of independent travel after the program ends? No, 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 maybe. Charlie, what about you? Maybe. Um, Mary, I don't, at this stage, 
run run with it nobody we don't get people to make that decision until the end of week three but if if Rupert was the only person that was traveling on afterwards don't worry we would help look after him and I often in week three before they everybody goes down to the coast can do a what's a, a, a zoom with people that are going onward traveling and want some more ideas and but you won't be let he won't be nobody will be abandoned at Cartagena Okay. All right. Lovely. Well, you know where we are. We are here uh, right up until the moment you depart. So any questions, whack it on the group WhatsApp, or if it's private, just give us a call in the office. Okie dokes. Thank you. Pleasure. Goodbye team and have a wonderful trip. Thank you. Thank you.